Hello, my name is Jim Sinesco, Vice President with AFC International. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about leak detectors and uh, the different types of leak detectors that are out there that you may run across. Uh, one of the one uh, instruments I highly recommend for any fire department, truck engine crews, hazmat teams, uh, industrial maintenance is the use of uh, a leak detector like the Sensit HSG2D. And the Sensit HSG2D has a unique uh, feature in that it has a, a much lower, lower uh, level of sensitivity to combustible gases and vapor, such as methane and natural gas and propane. Traditionally used, and I would say more should be used for the lighter fuel gases, um, the HSG2D gives you the ability to get down to a part per million levels. So when we're dealing with leaks in a house or leaks in an office or in an industrial uh, work area, um, it can see those leaks, whereas a traditional combustible gas sensor may be used on a, a four gas meter like this Q-Ray 3. Q-Ray 3, as you know, has combustible oxygen, COH2S. You know, 99% of fire departments and industrial places use uh, a gas like detector like this for confined space. That's great, but the percent LEL scale on these instruments cannot go down to the low, low, low level of detection like the Sensit H6G2D, okay? It has a slightly different type of sensor in how it operates, which gives it that ability to do the low end detection in part per million, and also the percent LEL scale as well. So it's two instruments in one. Um, it is a single gas instrument, meaning it only has one sensor and one purpose. So it's looking for natural gas, methane, combustible gases, and being used as a leak detector. But let's get back to the traditional combustible gas sensor on everybody else's gas detector, right? Uh, used in fire and hazmat and all that. Orchid for confined space, that is. It can be any maker manufacturer, MSA, Industrial Scientific, Drager, race systems, it doesn't really matter. That LEL sensor um, just can't get down to the low end to be an effective leak detector. Now, the key thing here is the definition of leak detector. Leak detector means very, very small concentrations. Small concentrations that you can even smell before the detector will see. So let's think about this. 1% LEL, the lowest possible number on your instrument that you can see, which is probably plus or minus 50% at that point, but the 1% LEL is equal to 500 part per million methane gas. Now again, methane gas is, in, is the main component in natural gas. It's 96, 97% of natural gas coming to your home is methane. You can't smell methane and you can't see it, you can't taste it. So what do gas companies do? They put mercaptan inside the gas as a safety. Mercaptan is a sulfur compound, you smell it. You smell it at very, very low levels. Now that, that amount and the, and the threshold of smell number, it's all over the map. You talk to some people, they'll tell you it's three, 400 part per million. You talk to others, they're 10, 50 part per million. And if you talk to other industrial hygienists, friends of mine, they'll say you can smell that mercaptan at 0 0.01 part per million. So here's the problem. Fire department shows up at a house and the homeowner, the dog, the gas guy, everybody says, I smell gas. Yep, you smell the gas because you can smell it at 0 0.01 part per million or one part per million or two part per million. You can smell it. The problem is my instrument that the fire department just brought in can't see it because it's too low. It's lower than the detection uh, of their LEL sensor. And again, remember, 1% LEL is 500 part per million. So we're smelling it at one, two, our meter only starts reading it at 500. And I'll tell you, at 100, 200, 300, natural gas in your house really, really smells strong. So a lot of times we'll get phone calls from fire departments with brand new instruments. Hey, what's going on, Jim, with my gas detector? I smell the gas, everyone smells the gas, the dog smelled the gas. My meter's reading zero, you gave me a bad unit. And I say, well, no. Your unit just can't see that low end detection limit. We know the LEL scale is ramping up to a bad explosive combustion mixture. So what I say is you're safe from combustibles, call the gas company, let them handle that. So there's the difference. Fire departments and, and most instruments you use for confined space just don't have the low end detection. Or should they? Nor should they. Is it the job of the fire department to find leaks in a house? Not necessarily if it's not dangerous. Could be dangerous if it builds up, yes. But if I walk in as a firefighter, check in the house for a natural gas call and I'm reading zero, 
that's a good day. Okay, so where does this sense it? Where does the sense it that I talked about being one of the greater instruments to have and a definite have, have in your toolbox, where does it come into play? Well, since it X HXG2D has a 10 part per million low end detection limit for natural gas and methane and light fuels. So it gives me that low range to confirm in my mind and in my smell and my nose and the dog and everybody who smells the gas that there is gas there. It confirms that my LEL meter is reading fine at zero, but gives me the ability to go from zero, 10, 50, 100, 200, upwards until we get into percent LEL levels and it will flip from part per million right into combustible levels, percent LEL. So it's a very, very cool tool. Not very expensive too. 300 bucks, 350, 400, somewhere in that range. Uses a fairly inexpensive sensor that can be replaced. Um, it does use three C cells that are inside this handle here. So it's very unique, very cool. It's got an extended wand so I can extend my, my reach and get into places. Um, so it has a lot of capabilities. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn this baby on. Um, you're going to go ahead and you'll see on the, on the instrument you have three buttons. The first one's a power mute button. We're going to go ahead and push that button and release. If you can see that on the screen, but it does go into alarm. It means it's, it's starting up. Turn my lights around here so you can see just a little bit. It's going through a warm-up phase. All the segments of the display are, are going to light up and give you uh, indications that the display is working fine. While it's warming up, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the back side. You'll see a horn and a nice uh, uh, safety na uh, name plate that talks about the serial number and the classifications. Uh, it is class 1, div 1, group D only for intrinsically safe. I'm take a look and make sure I said that right. Nope, actually C and D. So it doesn't have as high as intrinsically uh, safe rate as a four gas traditional gas meter. So this means for like your fuels, propane, gasoline, methane, you're going to be fine. It beeped at me. You'll see a little green LED light on there. You can see on the screen it says zero part per million. Very cool. At this point, I'm going to back out just a little bit. I've got a cylinder of gas right here. To prove this point a little bit, this is a thousand part per million methane gas. I've got it connected to a little cup at the end. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to go ahead and turn the gas on. I'm going to go ahead and put the cover over the top of the instrument. And we're going to wait and see and see where this instrument goes. And you can see it's at 310 part per million. It might be climbing up a little bit more, 300. And it is giving me some indication of some gas. Now, this hasn't been calibrated, so it's probably a little off. Obviously, you can see it's off by 700. But really, that's not a big deal, okay? What we can do with this, I'm going to take the gas off it just for a brief second. The second button here has tick and a cal button. I can go ahead and calibrate it if I want, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and, and hit the tick rate. And if you can hear that, it's ticking away. So the tick rate kind of gives us an, a feel for like, like, a, like a Geiger counter. So I'm going to keep the gas flowing and just go ahead and put it on top of the instrument. There you go. So as we get closer to the gas source, as we get closer to the gas source or farther away, we get indications that we're getting closer or farther away from the gas source. Very cool. So even if we were off a little bit, you notice we were off by a little bit. That's not a big deal. I mean, it is a, a deal. We want to make sure as a gas company, we want to make sure our instruments, this is what the gas companies will run, they'll make sure they're calibrated perfectly. But even if it's not, it can still be used as a tool to tell me, am I getting closer to something 
are backing away from the source. And that's where a leak detector does a really good job. Besides the fact that it's in the low part per million range, giving us an indication that, hey, we're not crazy, that our LEL sensor really is uh, doing its job. Now, just because we talked about the LEL, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and give this Keyray 3, when we just calibrated a little while ago in the last episode, the same gas, the same thousand part per million. Now, I'm not going to use a T. I'm just going to use a cover over the top. And we'll let it go for a little bit. And again, remember what I said, 1% LEL is about 500 part per million. So if I'm giving it 1,000 part per million here, we should be reading somewhere right around 1, 2% LEL. I'm going to flip it around to see where I'm at. And we're not getting much. We're getting very, very little. Well, why is that? Well, because we're, we're diluting it, we're pulling a sample in, and it's really below the minimum detection limit of an LEL sensor. If I told you most gas detectors really don't see one, remember I told you plus or minus 50%? This is what I'm talking about. Um, at the low, extreme low ends, combustible gas detectors really aren't calibrated to that. As we get farther into the LEL scale, they become more accurate, especially right around 10%. Um, or 50% where we calibrate them to. At the extreme low ends, even though we should be picking it up, we're a little off. Just a little off. And that little off can be the difference between zero or getting some kind of indication on our sense at HXG2D. So you can see the strength, you can see the advantage of using an instrument such as the HXG2D leak detector and an auto ranging instrument to give you some idea of where you are in regards to, I smell it, we know it's leaking, and is it safe or dangerous from a combustible environment percent LEL. Now what I'm gonna do, it might take me a few seconds here, I'm gonna go ahead and, and switch out. I'm gonna switch to a higher concentration of gas. This is going to be 50% LEL. 50% LEL in the cylinder. And go ahead and turn the gas on. I'm going to do the Q-Ray 3 first off. And you can see right away we're getting indications, we're getting alarms, as it should. And what's 50% LEL mean? Let's go back here. 50% LEL, if we know it's methane gas, we're at 50% of the amount that that will be combustible mixture. So we need to be very careful. We're not in an explosive environment right now, but we're halfway there. And you can see our meter is reading, oh, 40, 40, 50. I don't have this attached very good, so gas is escaping left and right, but we're pretty close. 42, 45 and climbing, okay? Very accurate in that range because that's what we calibrated it to. Let's take our Sensit 860-2D. Right away, we hear the tick rate way past our part per million scale. Meter's reading 38, 40, 41% LEL, 48, or 42, 43, <coughs> 44, 45, and up we go. So at that point, both instruments correlated, right? Percent LEL is percent LEL. Gas is gas. But from a low end perspective, the Q ray two, 3 or any multi gas instrument for confined space or LEL work is really not appropriate for the low end detection limits of leak detection. Shut the gas off. As it comes back down, it goes back into part per million, and then all the way back down to zero. So what I've shown you here is low end detection limits of instruments, instruments designed for low end light hydrocarbons and fuels, sensor response, and sensor recovery. As you notice, it didn't go e immediately and give you an answer. All no instruments do that. It takes time 
to respond, and then the recovery phase is sometimes can take a little time. So these are things we all have to understand, the limitations and strengths of sensors and different types of devices and where we should use these devices. Now, one of the, the weaknesses of the HXG2D that I have found through the years are heavier hydrocarbons, gasoline, solvents, fuels, heavy liquid fuels and solvents. The MOS sensor that's in here really wasn't designed for those types of gases and vapors. And in fact, over time, we'll burn that sensor out and actually very quickly. So where I would use the HXG2D from Sensit, I would use it for methane, natural gas calls, propane gas calls for homes and residents, uh, natural gas breaks in lines, uh, pipeline type work, but I would not use it for a, as a poor man's uh, photoionization detector or PID detector for hazmat applications. It just doesn't have the, the design and it's not for it. And also, the intrinsically safe uh, approval is not designed for that. It's for the methane, propanes, butanes. Uh, fuel gases that we get for our homes and heating. So that's pretty much where I would put this unit. So HXG2D, a great, great companion. In fact, I always recommend a leak detector, HXG2D from Sensit, along with uh, instruments for percent LEL. It gives you another perspective, extends your uh, limits and your detection limits when you're out in the general public helping people in a plant for natural gas lines, feeding into furnaces and, and boiler rooms and things. You just can't beat the HXG2D. Jim Sinesco for AFC International. If you have any questions, give us a call, 800-952-3293. Visit us on our website at www.afcintl.com. And definitely like us on our Facebook page. We can appreciate all the help we can get there. And again, thank you for your business and support. Have a safe day. Thank you.